Hello, I am Dr. Satish Rao, the J. Harold Harrison Distinguished University Chair in Gastroenterology at Augusta University, Augusta. I've been a, a professor of medicine with a special interest in neurogastroenterology motility disorders, particularly chronic constipation, IBS, and other bowel issues. Uh, and it's been a pleasure to take care of patients with these problems for the last 30 years. And uh, very soon, I think in the course of this conversation, you will meet one of my very distinguished patients. My name is Andreas Elrod. Been a patient of uh, Dr. Rao's about four years. Um, he's helped me through this long journey that I've had to get in a better place. Well, welcome, Andres, and thank you so much for being part of this educational initiative. And it was wonderful to have you um, some time back, and you shared with us your story, uh, what we had done for you in, in terms of testing and helping you through your journey. Um, it was very poignant. It was very helpful. Uh, there were lots of people who I heard um, connected with your problem, related to your story, and, and really were able to find uh, more help and more treatment. So I think it was very effective from that perspective. I think now we're meeting back after, after uh, a few years. And so I, my question is, um, how has this problem, this really challenging problem of constipation changed? Uh, for you since we last spoke and discussed your case? So um, as you, you may uh, remember, I had to come back to you like uh, 2021, uh, maybe it was around the middle of the year or so, you know, I had to keep, ask your recommendation about that semi-total colectomy. And, you know, you had all the data that I needed in you know, medical records, you know, because I'm, I was such a weird case and, you know, it's really hard to know out of all the factors that I went through in my life. Right. You know, I didn't have Crohn's or anything. So I also didn't know that was an option on the table. Dr. Frillis at Roper St. Francis, he is my surgeon and he, that was the second surgery that he did on me. And, you know, he said, I'm not, I can't do anything until I have all these medical records. They were so much medical records that Roper had to give me a special fax machine that would handle over 250 pages. Um, so finally, when I had the meeting before January 10th, my surgery, Dr. Frillis came in the room and he said in over his 20 years of practice, I was by far the one that did the most. Now, I, I guess it, it put me at ease that I knew I tried kind of everything under the sun. The surgery was planned to be laparoscopic. So on January 10th, he went in with the cameras. And when I woke up, I'll never forget my mom at the end of the, at the, end of the bed and my mom's face. And her eyes were so big and she said, they, they cut you open so bad. So it was 37 staples, you know, from my belly button. Hmm down to you know my pubic region but it was it was all the answers that i needed to know it was the reason why he did that was because when he went in with the cameras he was doing a you know a discovery taking a look you probably know everything that he was doing and well my colon was dilated mm. puffed up right so yeah he went in and got it out and when I woke up, it was the, you know, the, the, the first day of starting the best, you know, the, the best new chapter of In my your life. Yes. Yes. So just, just to recap, you know, I think um, um, when you had come, you had come to see me, it's actually almost five years or more now. Um, I think prior to that, um, you had been suffering with constipation and I think you noticed something coming out of your body and I think uh, they found that you had a prolapse mm -hmm. and, and so you had prolapse surgery that was before you had come to see me and mm -hmm. soon after the surgery you thought you felt well for a short period of time uh, but then you know the symptoms came back 
And then you were really uh, struggling with that. And that was the time when we first met and, and we did you know, a number of tests and procedures. Uh, we showed that your colon was lazy, um, not able to move things. I did a colonic manometry, uh, which showed that you, know, you had nerve dysfunction and, uh, and muscle dysfunction. Uh, but I said, you know, there was some signal still left in your colon. So we thought, well, let's see whether we can harvest those signals. Let's see whether we can maximize um, our ability. We also found other things like, you know, you had uh, SIBO, you had some infection. And, and so we then went on this journey and you were, you know, you were a great patient uh, you, uh, and, and you, you came along with that. And then you had a year to 18 months of really dramatic relief of your symptoms with all the treatments we gave you, medically treating your SIBO and everything else. Uh, and then gradually, you know, the, the laziness in your colon and the challenge of the colon resurfaced. Uh, and that, that, again, over the last couple of years and in the middle of COVID and everything else, it, it really became quite challenging. And we were able to then, you know, you also, we did biofeedback, you remember that. And that was also helpful because uh, in the process of struggling with your constipation, your bowel behavior changed uh, and you developed a new method that was no longer helpful. And then you were able to correct that as well. You know, you, you, you had biofeedback very successfully, uh, but so you could poop. If only poop got there, and the challenge was poop was not getting there and not getting there in an efficient manner. And, then, and for that, you know, we went through a lot of medications and combinations of medications. And we recognized that the colon has probably um, not, not working anymore and we are not able to get it to work. And I think that is when last year or so we made that decision. And, uh, and you know, it was not easy decision. I mean, it is not easy to go through what you've gone through. Um, and it looks uh, like the laparoscopic decision was was correct, but clearly uh, they had to switch to the open form because uh, when you have such a dilated distended colon, it is very challenging to do this laparoscopically and, and there are potential errors that the surgeon can inadvertently make. So I think that was the right decision to do a laparotomy and then go ahead and, and take care of your colon. So this happened in January. And then since then, have you had any more treatments or procedures or uh, give us an update as to how you're feeling and, and what's going on? So, yeah, I mean, you know, you're luckily, you know, your data kind of showed that my small intestine, you know, had, was working. Yeah. yeah. And uh, it, what really messed with me mentally is whenever my uh, surgeon you know, told me about the semi-total colectomy or he told me of my options and what really mentally messed with me for a while because, I'm, well, I'm 37 years old, so I'm, I still kind of feel young at heart, but, you know, it's getting older by the day and whatnot. It's, it's the, the new people coming into my job. It's just so weird how life moves so fast, but um, you know, he's you're still a very young man. You're only 37. <laughs> You've got a long way to go. Yeah, absolutely. And, and this all helps me to ensure that I am going to make it there. So, you know, he gave me the option of a bag. So that just did so much mentally on me. I don't, you know, I feel like in, in, in a case with somebody my age or a certain age range, you know, it's kind of like, I would think you would want to just push for, hey, let's do this. And if this doesn't work, then the bag. Um, so you know, obviously I'm like, I, I didn't even want to hear the, the word bag, but it is what it is. So, you know, he repiped my small intestine. Um, my, my, my recovery went fairly well and everything. There was little things with it. Um, but ultimately my first day back at work was February 20th or so. Very nice. Yeah. And what's really nice is, you know, I'm not full of crap anymore. Oh, good. <laughs> That is, so, that is great news. That is great news. <laughs> um, I use that one at work all the time. And the reactions of people is, is just amazing. It's awesome. <laughs> I, I like to get, you know, what, what a tool of mine 
during my dark times was was laughing you know having fun so that's that's just it's one i would say i guess it's one medicine or i didn't even think of it as a, as a medicine but that's something that uh, has always helped me through the really hard times and now you know it's just awesome to be happy and pooping every day i mean it's like one time a day oh, I, wow I, very nice yeah um it, it is amazing um i am at work just rocking it out i'm doing amazing things at work and you know all about to interface with a college and just i don't know there's so many things that are happening right right now my, my daughter you know really focusing on my daughter i'm able to support her better there's there's so many things that are going good oh nice oh, i couldn't i couldn't that is such wonderful news andreas i'm so pleased for you so nine months now since since the surgery and and everything and and uh uh, I think you're continuing to do well. Uh, great news about going almost every day. Uh, and, and really, essentially, this has been a, a life-changing experience for you. Absolutely. You know, um, you, you've been able to go back to your usual quality of life. You are, uh, you know, you, you like doing a lot of things. I know that from our conversations. And, and, and this problem stopped you from doing it. You became a social recluse. You were yeah. not going out. You were not going with your friends, not going with your family. And, uh, and as you said, your daughter and things like that. And, and, and that was weighing on you quite a bit. Yeah. Uh, and this unpredictability, the way you are feeling uh, and the effects on quality of life. So I think this was, uh, this was good. Uh, so I think uh, in, in, in let, let's try and do a quick recap. So you've had a long journey with this constipation, at least over eight to 10 years. It's been uh, not a very typical constipation journey, uh, but there are a lot of points, there are a lot of learning pearls in this, in your life story dealing with this illness. And, and you had one surgery with only partial relief, then you had a lot of testing, medical treatment, we identified um, that you had a lazy colon. We identified you had a dyssynergic problem where your muscles were incoordinated. Also, I think we found that your sensation was not good. Stool would come, but you would not feel it. And so you underwent biofeedback for that. You learned your sensation got better. You learned how to evacuate completely. And in the initially, some of the medications we gave helped to deliver the stool. And you had at least two, three years of relief. But then the problem came back because intrinsically the nerves and the muscles in your colon were significantly um, abnormal and not working. And you also had infection and we treated you for that. But there, there came a time when the bowel could no longer function and then you had to go and have a, a colectomy and then every subfloral colectomy and things joined up. After which you've had nine months of good relief. So I think that was a very interesting journey that you've gone through. And, and thank you so much, Andres, for really sharing your journey. And I'm sure this will be very helpful for many people. Uh, I hope and I pray that nobody goes through your, your journey. But if they are somewhere in that journey, I hope they get the right help. But today, I think we have wonderful tools like, like what you have experienced, you know, both early diagnosis, as you say, being proactive is very important. Early diagnosis is important. We can catch the condition at a much earlier age, treat whether it's a lazy colon issue, whether it's an irritable bowel colon issue, or whether it's a dyssynergy or incoordination issue. And if you can treat them early, then maybe we don't have to go towards surgery. But unfortunately, for whatever reason, if that was to be the case, you are a good walking example of how surgery was also able to help you. So we have multiple tools and we have to really tailor make the approach to each patient. And I'm glad you shared this journey with us, and thank you so much. May I say one more thing? Yes, I think I was going to leave, leave the last word with you. Have you any other thoughts and final comments for everybody? Yes, please. So, you know, I, I actually did not know for a while about semi-total colectomy being an option to me. You know, so it, it was really, I thought there wasn't any light. So that was kind of bittersweet maybe for me. I don't know. You know, I don't know how to put it. You know, it was shocking to me 
at first, but then when I learned about it, then I started warming up to it. And I didn't, and then I found, oh, well, this isn't as, you know, dramatic as one, you know, one thinks, you know, there's a lot of people with Crohn's and they have, you know, their colons removed, sometimes even more than just their colon. So, um, and, and, you know, I, there is a downside to it. You know, you are more di- prone to diarrhea. Me, I, I can easily manage that. It's not a big deal. But then there is this other side that I didn't realize there's a uh, added benefit I was on a three-year colonoscopy schedule because of my recurrent polyp. So that, that you know, that goes away. I always, you know, it was, it was always this dark cloud over my head. You know, I got, you know, every, I was working on my third or four, you know, at least my third one, you know, at, at age 37. So I don't know, that's, that's another added benefit that I don't have to worry about that anymore. So this has all been a, just, awesome for me. I'm, I'm so glad to be finally on the other side and, uh, you know, really look to the future, my daughter, focus on her and life in general. And, and I appreciate you, Dr. Rao, and your team. I wouldn't have been able to do it without you guys, you know, and then just my, the whole medical team that's, you know, behind the scenes. Thank you, Andres. I think you are a wonderful person and you're a wonderful patient to take care of. It's been a pleasure. And thanks for sharing your story with us. We really appreciate that. You're going to really help many, many more people. I appreciate that. That's awesome. Appreciate you too.